Hey guys, so in this video you and I are going to talk about the top three things that you need to learn in order to master JavaScript as a beginner. So let's get into it. Now, JavaScript is an enormous topic and if you are going into JavaScript, I congratulate you, you have made the absolute best choice in first programming language and the worst at the same time because nowhere else will there be a diversity that is as massive as in JavaScript. There are so many different things that you kind of need to know in order to be a master of JavaScript and it's continuously changing, it's growing, it's actually to the point where the term JavaScript fatigue is actually not that uncommon amongst professional developers. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. I personally argue that when you first start out, it's a little bit difficult because there's so many options. And when you are a professional, it's still a little bit tricky sometimes because especially when you work with people with a little bit less experience working in this ecosystem, you'll get a lot of small types of issues. But what's beautiful about it is that once you get the, over that first hump and you start to actually see the patterns and you kind of know what's a good bet and what's a bad bet in JavaScript, everything becomes amazing. At least from my perspective, you you get extremely productive. You get tons and tons of tools at your dispos disposal and things are... You, it, it's almost as being really, really fit. It, basically, that's how it is. Like, I find it very, very easy to keep up with other communities because if you can keep up in with JavaScript, you should know that no other community moves as fast. If you can keep the, up the pace in Java, uh, uh, that JavaScript has, everything else will be a breeze. I mean, Java or these more conservative languages, keeping up with them is just hilarious in comparison. So I like to think of it as going to the gym and being very, very fit. Anywho, let's get into the top three. Uh, top three. I, these are, from my perspective, the main three things that you need to know. Like there are tons and tons and tons of things that are important, but I'm going to stick to three because these are the first thing, three things you, in from my perspective, need to kind of learn as a beginner. And it's the things that are going to give you the most out of everything else. So let's get into it. First things first. I'm going to assume that you know the syntax of JavaScript. This is my assumption. I assume that you have all, already learned what a variable is, what a loop is, and all of that stuff. And after you know that, the first thing you should look into is DOM manipulation. What's a DOM? So the document object model. Basically, the intention of JavaScript when it first came around was to do dynamic updates to the document object model or the DOM on a web page. And basically, that means that you have the skills required to change things about a web page, basically. Do you know things such as that JavaScript can actually create new elements on a page and put them in and you can move things, you can remove things. You can manipulate a web page in almost any conceivable way. And that was actually the in intention from for JavaScript to begin with. So that's the first thing you need to learn. You need to understand that once the syntax there, what you're usually going to use JavaScript for is to do updates to a web page. Now, there are several things to learn here, but I would argue that you should learn the bare bone basics. You should absolutely know how to create elements and add them to a page, how to remove things, how to add a class name, for example, to an element to change the styling, how to change stylings, inline styling, for example. These things are very, very, very useful, uh, I would say. And that's th this should be your absolute first stop. Okay, so now you know DOM manipulation. Second thing you need to know. Now, one of the biggest problems with JavaScript is that it's all in the global namespace, which means that when you have your, add your JavaScript file or your script tag or whatever with that JavaScript onto the page, everything is living in the global namespace. And that, that's, that's an, a big issue. And an elegant way that the industry has kind of started moving towards to solving this issue 
is through bundlers. My personal favorite bundler is Webpack. So I would say that the second thing you should learn is Webpack. There are others out there. Unfortunately, Webpack is the most powerful one, the most popular one, and also the most complicated one of all the ones that I've tried. And I would urge you that almost every single, no, I'm actually going to go out and say it, every single company I've ever talked to and worked for personally uses Webpack. It is, it's not an industry standard, but it's the next best thing to it. So I would arg argue that you should learn Webpack once you know how to change things in the DOM and kind of just, just start there. Because when you start working in a really large JavaScript project, it's you can't just add a lot of stuff to the same JavaScript file or have everything in a script file or sorry, a script tag. Bundlers make things a lot, lot, lot easier. So learn Webpack. That's number two. That is really, really important, actually. And number three, and the last one, I'm, last tip I'm going to give you is to learn a JavaScript framework. Now, when I say a JavaScript framework, I would argue that your best bet is going to be either Angular or React. One of those two. Those are the two main players on the market with Vue coming, coming around more and more. And then you have things like Ember and so forth that are, they are around, but they're not, nowhere near as popular as React and Angular. I would say that that would be step number three. And the reason why you should look into these things in this order is because the first thing you should learn is that for most applications, JavaScript is used to m change things that are static on the web page, to enhance a static web page of some sort. And when you can do that, which you, is what you learn in step one, the next thing becomes, okay, how can I get more fancy? How can, how can I scale JavaScript? Which is where the bundler comes in. Because with the bundler, you can scale it to much larger, larger amounts of JavaScript. And the last step, learning a full framework, is when you actually build the whole application in JavaScript. So instead of having a static page that is served from the server and showed to the user, you will simply build the whole thing in JavaScript. So I would say that that will cover most cases. And if you know these things, you are congratulations Burr, by a lot. It, it kind of depends on your definition. It's not by my definition, but in a lot of people's opinion, you would be considered a front end developer. Congratulations. So these are my tips. Start by learning how to manipulate the DOM, things, things of that nature. Learn a bundler, I suggest Webpack, and learn either Angular and React as the last step. These three tips is going to take you from a complete beginner who just learned JavaScript to knowing everything, virtually everything, that you need to know in order to be a professional front-end developer. Have a great day.